all right, I'll make you a deal, Oklahoma. You can have your Bible classes, but I get to teach them. Yeah, you've no doubt heard about this shit already. Since the Supreme Court's made it so abundantly clear that we're in full theocratic freefall, the state superintendent of schools in Oklahoma declared last week that every Oklahoma classroom will be required to have a Bible on hand and to teach from it. And before you try to dismiss this with thoughts of fair play, before you say, oh, we'll see how they feel about that when we bring in a Quran, a Bhagavad Gita, and the Satanic Bible and start teaching from them, I need to remind you that we're not doing fairness anymore. Well, hell, we never were, right? The SCOTUS couldn't be more clear on this. We're not doing away with the separation of church and state. We're doing away with the separation of the Christian church and state. The rest of the religions are still on the other side of the wall. Just, just look at the statement from said superintendent, Ryan Walters, whose effort to start the nation's first fully funded public religious school just got thwarted by the state Supreme Court, announced the policy on Thursday. But he was real careful to avoid using the term religious as he talked about it. He said he was mandating Bibles for every classroom because they would impart, in his words, quote, historical understanding, end quote. To further galvanize his lie, he added, quote, the Bible is a necessary historical document to teach our kids about the history of this country, to have a complete understanding of our legal system, and is, frankly, we're talking about the Bible, one of the most foundational documents used for the Constitution and the birth of our country, end quote. Now, not that you need me to tell you this, but I should still point out that every fucking word of that is a lie. The Bible does not impart a historical understanding. If anything, the Bible's atrociously bad chronology is going to confuse the fuck out of anybody trying to reconcile its timeline with the historical one. And it's certainly not a necessary document to teach our kids about the history of this country. As you may have noticed, the United States doesn't appear in the Bible. Unless you buy the fucking Donald Trump version. And despite the desperate protestations of pseudo-historian David Barton and his ilk, the Bible was in no way used in the founding of this country unless one of the founding fathers used it to steady a wobbly fucking table. Hell, portions of the Constitution were specifically rewritten to sound less biblical because they were so loath to leave the impression that their work was biblically inspired. The Bible is also not necessary to understand our legal system. Turns out that in our country, it's presently illegal to beat your slaves regardless of how quickly they wake up. Turns out that rape is illegal even when the victim doesn't scream, even if she's in a city. Turns out that you're allowed to pick up sticks on any fucking day you want. Hell, 10 years ago, I'd have said you'd learn absolutely nothing about modern jurisprudence from the Bible. Nowadays, I'd say, you know, it, at least it's going to tell you where the fucking Supreme Court is trying to get us. But other than that, it's got fuck all to do with the American legal system. And whatever tenuous strings a legitimate legal historian might draw between the two would certainly be over the heads of Oklahoma's middle schoolers. And that brings us to the chief lie of his misdirection, the notion that the Bible is, quote, one of the most foundational documents used for the Constitution and the birth of our country, end quote. That's the crux of their revision. That's the doorway that the court's theocratic majority left wide open to Christianity and only Christianity. The deciding factor on First Amendment violations is tradition. It's historical precedent. It's longstanding practice. And where it isn't that, it's majoritarianism, right? Like in the Bremerton decision. After the court sided with that high school football coach and legalized coercive prayer by school officials, a lot of people were like, well, let's see how they like that when the Satanists lead their team in prayer. But of course, that was never a fucking risk. This is one of those things that can only ever be utilized by the majority. And I guarantee you that the instant they're not the majority anymore, they're going to snatch away that justification and come up with a new one. Of course, there are plenty of fun ways to make the biblical learning requirement backfire, right? All it would take is one day of no illusions, dirty Bible stories to make Ryan Walter swallow his vomit. One day a baby smashing, daughter enslaving, dung facial, livestock genociding, shit bread baking, scroll eating, piss drinking, God mooning, rape victim selling, slave beating, horse emissions, and maybe he'd be rethinking his mandate. But that's no more realistic, right? That's not a real solution. I don't expect school teachers in Oklahoma to sacrifice their jobs in protest of this shit. And even if they did, I wouldn't want them to subject fifth and sixth graders to the barbarism of that book of horrors to make a point. Now, it's not to say there's no recourse here. Groups like Americans United for Separation of Church and State have already signaled that they're going to sue to try to keep this mandate from taking effect, and they might even win. I seriously doubt it, given the theocratic proclivities of this court right now, but they might. 
The whole point of doing this shit is to see where the new line is. This iteration of the court has tossed out every existing precedent when it comes to church-state separation. So what we're seeing now is Christian zealots testing the boundary. And make no mistake, we're going to walk right up to the line on this. Given the current makeup of the court and how young everybody is, I expect to see Mike Johnson with a knife over his son on an altar before the Supreme Court actually intervenes. Now, I'm going to tell you a sad fucking truth here, okay? None of us are going to live to see an America as religiously free and pluralistic as the one that I grew up in. You know, maybe some of you who are in high school or college, maybe, maybe you will. And we you know, might all live to see a more free, open, and liberal society. That we probably will see. But very few of us stand any chance at all of seeing a world where religious freedom meant what it did in the halcyon days of 2013. And knowing that makes it harder to fight. Knowing that you're never going to reach the starting line makes it really hard to run the race. But the further back we fall, the more important it is that we keep running.